Hello everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Main Character Syndrome. I'm your host, Cheesy Man Fredo, aka Alfredo Morales. And with me here, as always, is my co-host Julian. Say hello, Julian. Hey, what's up? There there he is. There he is. And uh before we get started with this episode, I'd like to say thank you to our previous guest of Kazoo. Uh, we talk about how, how much of fucking hate video essays now in the previous episode so if you if you hate video essays i recommend you check that out um but enough about enough about that let's uh let's talk about our not new guest but uh was this the third time you've been on here mimiori is it i thought i've only been on once have i been on twice i think you've only been on twice actually oh i don't remember anyway i'm back yeah yeah there you go there's mimiori <laughs> um Miori, what do you what do you what do you do for people who don't know you? Um, so most people know me for my comics on Twitter. Um, most notably Among Us Girl, although Among Us Girl is kind of old now. Um, yeah, and an now, old bitch. <laughs> and now a lot of people like Serendipity, which is an ongoing comic I've been doing about a magical girl with depression. And that's been running for a couple of years. And then I'll, also on YouTube, I do um, videos about anime and mm-hmm. uh, just random stuff. Yeah, they're um they're calling you the the female mother's basement. I yeah. heard. Yeah, that's, oh, your, wow. that's your new title. <laughs> <laughs> Father's <Nope>. basement. <laughs> Basement. Oh that no, that's kind not... of more. That has a more sinister ring to that it. That sounds awful. That sounds like yeah. a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's all it's all good stuff. Serendipity is really good. I'm up to date. I give her money every day just so I could <laughs> get a crumb of serendipity. Um, not every day, every month. Yeah, yeah. I'm on her yeah, Patreon. Yeah, release it monthly. Yeah, and she um she makes anime videos. Um, she made a video about the anime Tangled last time. <laughs> Check yeah, that out. My favorite anime. Yeah, Tangle. Right. Uh, how do you how do you like uh how do you like the doing the anime video game? I don't I don't see too many people jump in on that a lot recently, or not anyone trying to do anything too different besides just talking about Naruto or One Piece, you know? Or Evangelion for the yeah. millionth time. Right. Um, what do you mean, like, 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 like? How do you how do you feel about? <laughs> did you like it? Do you hate it? Do, do you like it? Are you enjoying um, it? I <laughs> I don't know. I I guess like. <laughs> how many marriage proposals I mean, from uh, Bakugo anime profile pics have you gotten? <laughs> not many, unfortunately. Damn. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of just like I like anime and. Um, honestly, I don't watch enough of it. It's kind of an excuse for me to watch more mm. and then talk about it. Um, maybe make like a couple dollars off of it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's 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 not like it's obviously like a side thing. It's it's a hobby. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not expecting to be the new anime man or anything, <laughs> but but it's fun. Yeah, it's not like. I'm not super, you know, big. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, no, yeah, I got it's you. Fun. It's a fun hobby. I, you kind of have um, to be an insane person to be the next anime man. That's true. Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's not worth it. If I had to guess. Oh, do you hear that? It might be worth it. It's just a lot of work, and uh, you'll be sacrificing huge buttloads of your personal creativity in the pursuit. But once you reach that uh, pivotal topmost point, you'll be selling Miku sweat shirts. <laughs> I guess you you'll made be selling it. G Fuel. You'll be sponsored. Yeah, I guess that's kind of like what worries me about um, being a content creator in general is you make one thing that people like, and then people just tell you that they want that that same thing, like copy and paste it a hundred times. Yeah, and yeah, like. Like, I mean, I made Among Us Girl, and then people kept, after I stopped making it, people are like, I want more Among Us Girl. And I'm like, I don't want to make it no more. Girl. <laughs> yeah. 
And then I made, you know, I made that video about Tangled and I got a couple comments like you should do the other Disney manga. And I'm like, why? Oh, yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> I have read uh, those about... other Disney manga. And Did you? It is mostly a passion thing. You know, you should not yeah. expect people to go to those other books if they don't care because they are different. And the quality varies wildly between them. Yeah. If you really like the movie that it's based off of, then it's like a fun little romp. Yeah. But if you if you just if you just kind of like the movie and don't really care that much, then it's like, okay, what the fuck? This is boring. This yeah. is um it's so like did they even watch the video? You know, <laughs> when I when I hear you say that, because it's I like know. in the video you just say like, Oh, uh, Tangled is uh my favorite Disney movie and <laughs> and then it's like Oh, well, obviously she would like the others. It's not what she fucking said, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Come on now. The whole like, first five minutes is me going like, I love Tangled, specifically Tangled. Tangled is my favorite movie. I've seen it a hundred times. The Disney parents, <laughs> Rapunzel, no one else. Y yeah. Right, exactly. exactly. If It just, it just kind of like, I mean, I don't know. I'd say I'm going to shit on the fans. This is the fan <laughs> shitting episode. Go ahead, go ahead. But basically, like, there's a lot of um, unoriginality in comments. You know, yeah. like um, when you uh, when you post something that does pretty well and the people suggest what the next idea should be, yeah. it's usually the most unoriginal shit you ever like heard. Right. But but I mean, I, I guess that's why <laughs> this is why you're a fan and I'm a creator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. a leader and you're a follower. You're a shit. Exactly. A shark. I, I'd rather I'd rather be a dick than a swallower. Kanye West. <laughs> anyway <laughs> yeah people people tend to say that they just want the same thing over and over again but if you actually mm -hmm. end up making the same thing over and over again people get bored like people yeah. don't people don't know what they want that's what you have to learn when you're yeah. a content creator is people don't fucking know what they want just make whatever you want yeah definitely it's um it, i think the the full saying is like people don't know what they want but they know what they like right exactly. so like you know like there's another phrase. I probably said this before on the podcast. I love repeating myself on the podcast because I'm <laughs> I'm like a little fucking Teddy Ruxpin. But basically, um, if you ask before they invented the car, if you asked a person what kind of like mode of transportation would they like to be invented to to transport things a lot quicker, no one's gonna fucking say car because hasn't been invented yet. They're gonna they're gonna just say I just want a faster horse, mm -hmm. right? You know, because the idea of a car has not even entered their mind. You know, and that, I think that's a lot of, uh, I think that's a lot of a big trap a lot of people fall into, where like there's such a huge lack of imagination, right? Oh, um, I had a conversation like that earlier today. Some guy really? was talking about like combating AI in the future, and everybody was like tut tutting and well actuallying him, and. I wasn't really a part of the conversation. I just slipped in and I said, you know, I understand what you're saying, but you have to account for the severe lack of imagination in this server. And everybody got so angry. They just stopped <laughs> the entire conversation. Well, that was like more of an insult. How dare like, this no, high yeah. guy we hate say we don't have an imagination. <laughs> That's hilarious. There's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of fucking idiots in this server who are stupid and have small brains. <laughs> I thought they fucking heard when you said that. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, it's um, it's a big like lack of imagination. Like when you, it's like, I hate to I hate to get political, but when you suggest like kind of some sort of social change, and people like because they're only limited to what they have seen exist, they can't think of like they can't imagine yeah. things getting better. Yeah. Right. You know. Like, um, I think like when people, when people say like, oh, we should get rid of the cops and they're like, oh, we're using like crime run, run rampant. And it's like, well, no, can you not imagine there'll be another body organization that will handle that? That doesn't have as much power or fucking corruption or influence as a fucking cop does. Yeah, As you a know? newer organization, they're more susceptible to corrective action, whereas mm -hmm. being a cop is like an institution hundreds of years old that people are resistant to correcting. Mm -hmm. right exactly but that's just like one example of let's what just I mean. make this the let's just make this the fucking communism episode <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i uh i try never to i think i said this before but when i'm at work i try never to kind of like this is a very old term but uh reveal my power level if you will yeah. to people, <laughs> right 
because um like i hate getting i like i know on twitter it might seem like oh i love arguments but i really don't like them too much you know i used to like them back in the day but now i've kind of just grown tired too yeah it is different and it's kind of like if they're your coworkers, you're gonna have to see them every other day so it's like oh god how like abrasive do you want to come off as you know yeah right so i i try to like i never like say any terms i never like label myself as anything ever around people um i think it's pretty easy to do that if you like realize that like both like liberal and conservatives kind of they want they usually want the same things you know right so there is a lot of common ground it's just that once you throw in labels because so many people just don't know the definition of labels or they have like a some words are just like poison you know like if you call yourself a socialist that that comes with like so much baggage so like i can't like just easily say that around people also sometimes it really does help with like like arguments um but like not like all the time you know i'm not trying to get if people hear certain buzzwords they just completely shut you they shut out your opinion right exactly yeah (laughs) not gonna lie i am like that but with like opinions about like media i guess (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like uh when i hear people say they're like oh i really like the the fnaf movie i'm like okay cool and then in the back of my mind i, I write down a mental note okay don't trust their takes on things <laughs> right <laughs> have you talked about the fnaf movie on a podcast yet uh i brought it uh, there was one podcast where i tried to bring it up but let's say let's say our our guests were a little bit too funny there were so funny that i couldn't talk about fnaf and if you look down on the previous episodes you might be able to guess which episode i'm talking about (laughs) but um i i I did want to do one i did want to do like an episode where we went over the fnaf movie with my uh my partner because they're they're a big fnaf head but um what's interesting is that they they did not like the movie and they felt weird like after the movie came out and everyone loved it for some weird ass reason um, they didn't like it, and they thought like they felt so weird because like oh, I'm such a big FNAF fan, you know, it, and it's crazy that I didn't like this movie, right? So we're gonna um, talk about that. Do you have a FNAF opinion? Well, Mimiori? my opinion on it is like it was probably the best theater experience I've ever had in my life. Really, as someone as someone who almost never goes to the theater, like I I don't see that many movies, but when okay. I went to see the FNAF movie, it was like this whole big thing. I went with um, a mango and nice mango's friends and stuff and um it was just hilarious like everyone like there's these teenage boys behind us that would just (laughs) say like the funniest shit Um, (laughs) really it wasn't annoying it actually enhanced the movie it was like that's super in my in my fucking peripheral that's like Um, super rare that like oh teenage boys were talking in the movie but they were actually funny (laughs) it was really funny the funniest thing that happened was um when chica put the cupcake in the vent one of the boys behind us was like, oh, my God, Chica's so smart. <laughs> they were, like, commentating on it. It was so funny. But anyways, that kind of made me really enjoy the FNAF movie just because my theater experience and everyone, like, reacted to everything, like, really loud, like, gasps mm-hmm. and stuff. No, that's always so, fun. Yeah, that made me enjoy it a lot. The movie isn't, like, a good movie. Oh, no. Um, the movie but, is, like, yeah, go on. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed myself, and I, th- I thought it was, like, a fun movie, but I... I would not watch it by myself. Like the only reason I enjoyed it was because of that theater experience. So that's my opinion on it. <laughs> I think um I I think the with, with me with the FNAF movie is that I feel like it would have been an entirely different movie if it came out like the 6 years ago when they promised it was going to come out, you know? Like it would have yeah, been a whole I different movie. Because of the the lore has been so like expanded yeah i guess is the nice way of putting it right um but back then it was a lot more focused on like the really creepy aspects mm-hmm. right um and, um and and back then it was less i mean a lot of kids loved five nights at freddy's including me obviously oh, but yeah. i feel like it was more it was less like five-year-olds loved it and more like teens liked it so maybe it wouldn't have gotten that pg 13 rating it would have been rated a little higher <laughs> who knows yeah true that's that's like what i was kind of because i was i was hoping and like god i would i would love to see what the fnaf movie would have looked like in an alternate universe if it came yeah. out back early when it when they promised it would 
come out with it. Um, that being said, I do have a funny FNAF story because we went to actually an early screening of it, right? So it was like maybe two two days before the movie came out, and um, it was like a special thing organized by Blumhouse, and they were giving out like merch and whatnot. Uh, they were doing a contest at the start, like, oh, we're gonna ask three questions, and uh, the person to raise their hand the quickest will uh, get a they will get a fucking um you know poster or shirt or whatnot, right? And the first question, I love this moment. This was so fucking awesome. <laughs> This, this another this is another kid situation too. This kid was so based for doing this. Um, they they showed a poster of the movie and they're so like, can you name all uh five animatronics that are on this poster? And this kid raised his hand real fast and they picked them and the kid said, um, there's actually six animatronics on that poster. <laughs> Oh, they're no. based based that was so badass that being said he was wrong there wasn't six <laughs> <laughs> the fucking, but oh i love that confidence that kid was like because he, he probably knew spring trap was in the movie so he's like he, he kind of like wires probably got crossed in his brain when he heard like oh name all the animatronics right but <laughs> yeah. that's really funny that was so um, awesome actually there's six animatronics um, actually animatronics. there's six Another awesome moment in the movie was when when the lore change in the movie happened, like when like, oh, uh, I guess spoiler for the FNAF movie, but when they revealed that like, oh, Vanessa's William Daffin's daughter, everyone fucking gasped in the fucking theater. They're like, oh, and but it's not like a, it's not like a usual like I don't know if people who have no idea anything about Five Nights at Freddy would have gasped at the same level that like the audience we went to with was gasping at, you know. Yeah, because this early screening was just pure FNAF fans, you know, like purely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so I'm I'm pretty sure maybe like a regular person would have gasped, like, "Oh wow, no way! Oh, what a twist!" Right, but like to the FNAF fan, this is not just a twist. This is like deliberate, like lore change. You know, that's kind of like imagine you're watching the Mario movie and they're all like, "Oh, Princess Peach is Mario's sister." <laughs> like that would have been. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> that would have been, been a good movie. Yeah, that. that- that would have been fucking insane. That, speaking about like fucking movies, I I don't know if I'd say I was disappointed in the Mario movie, but um, you ever a uh, Mimi Ori? You probably seen the movie The Last Unicorn, right? You're a girl, right? Uh, I've seen it once when I was really little. I don't know shit about it though. Well, you should rewatch it. I feel like yeah. it might be it's up really your good. alley. It is really good. Uh, well, I but love the art is really pretty. That's oh, it is. It. Um, in The Last Unicorn, there's one scene. And this is my favorite scene of The Last Unicorn. Where um the unicorn like they're traveling, and they end up in this kind of like little fire camp, and there's like uh just mostly men, and they have they have one woman there, and she's an older woman, not like super old. She's she's like implied to be maybe in her late thirties, and she meets the unicorn, and she's so mad that she that she meet that she has met the unicorn when she's an old woman, because when she's a little girl, that's when she wanted to meet the unicorn. She feels ashamed that she has to meet the unicorn as a much older woman because she's like, how, how dare you show up now when I needed you when I was a kid? Right. Like, because it, it's like it, it's a whole thing about like, oh, yeah, when when, you know, when you're, you know, you're a younger person, you have you, you want, you know, you, you want these fantastical things, these like things you enjoy to like appear in your life. But like, you know, now that you're older, you become cynical, you begin weathered down, you um. You almost become unpure, you know, and and then these things show up in your life, and you're like, "How dare you? I, I've like, I'm not clean. I'm, I'm not, I'm not that pure person no more," you know, and um, that's kind of how I felt watching the Super Mario Brothers movie, because <laughs> I probably would have liked a lot more when I was younger. <laughs> oh yeah, I hated that. That thing was so boring. I I cannot remember anything that happened in the movie. The uh, only thing that I liked about the movie was whenever Donkey Kong was on screen. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big Donkey Kong fan. <laughs> no, I just I just really liked the performance. I am um, parts Kong. with a uh, Luigi when he's captured by Bowser. Um, I I feel like God, it, it, it sucks how little scene. Yeah, there should have been more Yaoi that agreed, but also um, it sucks how little screen time Luigi got. And also, my favorite Donkey Kong line is like. His, his line that implies he has daddy issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't know what it's like to have a father who's disappointed. He said something like that. <laughs> I was like, damn, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this angle they're going with Donkey Kong, you know? Fuck. 
<laughs> also, people <laughs> kept saying like... that the uh, part where they used uh, Take On Me as a musical stinger took them out of the movie, but I liked it. I um I I thought everything was like all all the musical choices specifically like kind of like the licensed music were very like in my opinion very safe options. Yeah, you know, it right? Was so bad, I I hated. All of them. <laughs> I I loved the like orchestral remixes of the game music mm-hmm. that was really yeah. pretty. But every time they played a licensed song, I was like, mm. <laughs> I felt like um I felt like there was a lot of missed opportunities. Like I feel like a couple of slight tweaks and I would have liked the movie more. I felt like there should have been more. Okay. First of all, more scenes with Luigi. There's certain characters you could have cut down to like, like that one like star that was like always being like cynical and whatnot. Like, why was that guy there? Like, like, cause I thought they were going to like, um, do a teaser for like super Mario galaxy. That's why he was there, but no, he was just there. And I mean, I guess he was funny. I guess, but any character in the Mario movie could have been that character, you know. Um, they should have more with like Luigi. Um, there was another thing. I feel like there was a lot of like, there was a lot of lack of development between like Mario and Peach. Like, I think things moved a little bit too quickly, you know. Right. I just hate. I just didn't like Peach at all in the movie. <laughs> I did it, not like her. Not a big I mean, Peach fan. I. <laughs> no, I like Peach, but but I don't know. Like Did you hate how unfeminine they made her? <laughs> kind of, but that's not oh, really wow. the issue. It's <laughs> yeah. more of like it it just felt like fake feminism. Like she, mm. like she's super badass and like yeah, I don't she doesn't I get that. It feels like it's not earned. I don't know. I don't I don't really want to say like too much because i don't really give a fuck about the mario movie mm-hmm. but i just i just felt like she was kind of grading um but also like i didn't like any of the characters except for donkey kong so mm. <laughs> i felt like some of the characters were like almost memorable you know like i feel like a lot of the characters were like borderline memorable yeah like you there's know? a lot of intention in a lot of the character performances it's just mm-hmm. there's nothing happening in the movie <laughs> Yeah, it's just like it. It's crazy because like it, it's the defenders of the movie are like insane to me. Because like, have have they played enough Mario games? Where like, I don't know. Like, I I feel like I just finished playing Super Mario RPG, and that that storyline is pretty like bare bones. But it had like more going on for it, like character wise, than like the Super Mario Brothers movie. You know, right? And that's like insane to me. I don't really play Mario games. I mean, I know basically the baseline. I know about right. I know about as much as like an average forty five year old mom does nice. about Mario. Um, but what I do know is like Paper Mario is like the most character like driven mm-hmm. one. Um, but the rest of the Mario games, like it's not really about the characters. They're they're mascots. Yeah, they're yeah. Not really supposed to have like depth. Um, there isn't like there's only very like sprinkles of like yeah like characterization or like like because i like don't get me wrong i don't fucking need mario to go through a character arc or anything you know i don't need him to be like oh i'm not racist no more guys i don't need to, <laughs> to be shit like that you know but it's it's like i don't know like give us something a little bit more you know like you, you could put a little bit more you know and and sometimes i see the mario defender saying like Oh, this is like the best they could have done, which is like a, an, an mm. excellent example of like lack of imagination, you know? Yeah, going back right? to that. Mm-hmm. And I and I think that's also like I think, and I've said this before. I think it's so important people watch as much like movies as they can, or 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 if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about movies, please watch more than just mainstream movies. Yeah, just like yeah. watch like stuff, not not just like indie movies. You should like straight up most every city has like a fucking like little small film festival just go there because you're probably going to see something that you you can never see ever again there's so many like short films i've watched that are no way else to watch them they're not even like on youtube or like on vimeo i've I've only been able to see them that one time in that one film festival and it kind of creates a sense of like oh you're the lucky few but not just that, oh, you fucking feel special. But I mean, it, it expands your mind. You know, you get to like you get to see like what uh, a movie is. Um, there's a very um, 
and I'm going to keep fucking talking here, but there, there's a very infamous story at this one film school where, like, um, at the start of the semester, before you start your classes, they make you watch this one movie that's infamous for being super fucking boring, but you're forced to watch it. You have to watch this movie before you even start, like, anything with the classes. And the whole movie is basically, like, two hours of a photo frame on a wall as the camera slowly zooms out. And there might be, like, something happening in the background. Like, you hear some sort of altercation, but you can't... It's not enough to pinpoint anything exactly. And it's, like, a... It's basically just a, a one shot of a slow zoom out that goes for two hours, right? And they make you watch that because they want you to, like, to see, like, here's, like, the limits of film. Here's, like, how far you could take it, right? And they're not, and they're not saying, like, oh, make something like this. No, they're saying is like... If, once you kind of see where like the edges like everything else becomes kind of like you know more easier to comprehend you know um i see people say like uh, there's this one tweet and i, and I agree and i really like like this tweet because that's how i always feel every time i watch more movies it's like you ever seen a movie that makes you go back and give all the other movies you watch like lower ratings you know <laughs> sometimes sometimes i feel like i'm pretentious but then i hang out with you Oh yeah, <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not pretentious. I'm. I'm just. I'm just a genius, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, but I understand what you mean. Like, like, yeah. You, if you're going to say that the Mario movie is actually a a good like film, um, mm-hmm. I would like to know that you've at least consumed like I- more than like two movies this year <laughs> yeah 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 i you could okay you could like the mario movie it's fine it's legal <laughs> to like the mario movie it's whatnot but <laughs> like i don't know it's a, it's another thing of like oh i really like the mario movie it makes me like do, do the thing where like mental note don't trust this person's takes you know yeah well i think the biggest counter example to the mario movie being like quote unquote a good film is the Lego movie. And I know many, oh, many yeah. people have said that, but when you have the Lego movie, which is just such a good mm-hmm. movie, and then you compare it to the Mario movie, which in both cases are based off of an IP that doesn't mm-hmm. have like characters. You have to build them from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Um you can do that in one movie and make it good. Right. So exactly. No excuse. <laughs> I think um I think uh Speaking about the Lego movie, have you seen uh have you seen the Barbie movie? Has everyone here seen the Barbie movie? Yeah. 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 I liked it, but <laughs> I still feel like it's I feel like the Lego movie is a lot better. Cause I feel like like and I don't want like fucking like I, I, I guess I want my Lego bias to be revealed. <laughs> but I feel like what the Lego movie was saying was a lot deeper and more wider of a concept. Because, like, I, I like I liked the Barbie movie, but I still feel like the, it was very, like, baby's first feminism, you know? Yeah. Right? And, like... Yeah, it, yeah go it, on. It works, it works as baby's first feminism, is what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, there's moments that I liked, and, um... But there's moments that I thought, like, oh, this, this could have been developed a little bit more. Like, the Will Ferrell CEO character, like... Like the fact that he's just unironically like I'm, oof, you know it's all about women. Like, and it's not even like an ironic thing. I'm like, okay, that's funny, but like, I don't know. Like, if you if you're trying to say this wider thing about the patriarchy, it, having that character just be the funny like CEO character doesn't really work too much, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and I and there's like this. I see people like say uh, uh about um oh there's too much screen time dedicated to like Ken. <laughs> and I feel like that's like not even that's I feel like that's mostly because I think Barbie has like the same problem that um characters like Mario and Mickey have and the way let me explain before everyone's like what the fuck are you talking about you fucking <laughs> sicko but but basically like Mario and Mickey since like they're the head of the company they're like the mascot they're not really allowed to have too much of a personality right Meanwhile, like their supporting casts are allowed to kind of like have a full range of like different things going on for them, you know, right? Like, yeah. look at all the look at all the fucking Donald Duck lore. Why is there so much fucking Donald Duck lore? Why is there and there's like an extended Donald Duck family tree, and they all have like their own little fucking adventures, and they had like all these fucking moments. Like the the Donald Duck comics are so like 
thorough and and crazy and like amazing but you never see that with like nikki really um and the same goes for like mario because mario doesn't even have really too much of a distinct personality he's like i'm a i'm a i'm a hero guy i do i do good things and i'm like yeah sure that's that's like a, a that's like a tr- that's like a trope that's not really like a person like luigi has like kind of more character you know like oh i'm fucking i'm scared and, and what that's a little <laughs> bit more you know that's that's something a little bit more even like people like bowser and um i don't know if i say peach maybe 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 peach got more screen time you'd see more of that but yeah and th- that goes with like barbie since barbie's like kind of this mascot she's kind of like she has no um too much she doesn't have enough room to kind of like be her own so like what you do is that you pick one of the side characters and you expand upon that you know there's something interesting about like ken trying to like ken's reaction to realizing that he's like a male accessory you know and like how does he respond to that there's a little bit a little bit more meat to that like sure there's so, like yeah go I on guess that's, i mean that's the, the same thing that barbie kind of realizes too in the right. world that they kind of have the same arc which which is why i think barbie and ken were the only like characters i liked in the movie because the main the movie was like those two characters clashing because they both want the same thing, mm-hmm. but they can't like reconcile it. Obviously, right. Um, the mom and the daughter character were shit. Really, <laughs> the CEO was shit. Um, every everything else was shit except for Barb, the Barbies and the Kens, and even like some of the the Barbies, like the weird Barbie. I feel like that wasn't. It wasn't like done very well. Like a lot of missed potential. Yeah. You feel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just. I just didn't really care about anything except for Barbie and Ken. And that's why it's annoying when people are like, Ken shouldn't have been in the movie that much. It's because it's like, he's half of the movie. Right. Like, for a reason. No, I agree. He's yeah. half of the conflict. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, I get I get that. It's funny when... um, Okay, before we go on, I agree with Mimiori. Uh, but, like, <laughs> it's funny how, like, when I see people, like, have a take about, like, oh, why was this in the movie? And in my head, I'm like, what, do you not get that this is supposed to kind of, like, parallel this? You know? Yeah. Like, like um, earlier, I saw someone tweet about, like, um, if, this is just the movie fucking episode. But, like, I saw someone tweet about the Suicide Squad movie, the James Gunn one. And um, someone was saying, like, why was Starro, like, the 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 big boss they fight at the end, you know? And, and I'm like, do do you not like see the parallel between like, oh, Starro's main power is that he mind controls people and the Suicide Squad are being manipulated by their own government to do actions they don't agree with, but they have no choice because their heads are going to explode if they don't do it. You know, that's supposed to parallel like what Starro just does biologically, you know? And, um, it, it's funny when um yeah it's, it's funny when there's like all these like kind of things that are like that you feel like it's obvious in the work but like it goes over people's heads and um i feel like that's kind of like why you see a lot more like stories kind of be more blunt with like what they're trying to say nowadays you know because like i think it's just become more and more obvious kind of how much it goes over people's fucking heads um i saw a tiktok i i look at a lot of tiktoks and i saw a tiktok where someone was talking about how people kept saying like, "Oh wow, this generation doesn't get media literacy," but like they like they didn't back then either, you know. Like yeah. like people will watch movies and not pay attention. And um, what's funny is that like now like you have a phone, so now you have more of an excuse to not pay attention, you know. But like um, there was like for example, I forget the name of the movie, but it's a it's, it's a scene. It's got Jack Nicholson. And I think he's like. He's like in the military and he's like being he's like he's like in court and, and the famous line is you can't handle the truth. Do you remember you know that line? Don't what movie I'm talking about? I know what movie you're talking about. It's yeah. Like, it's like in a court scene, right? Yeah, it's a court scene. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't remember the title either, but A Few Good Men is the name of the movie. It came okay. out in nineteen ninety two. Yep. Oh, so basically movie. So basically like people like like really kind of like idolize that line like oh you can't handle the truth kind of like being like oh yeah this is like a boomer like destroying like a zoomer and whatnot (laughs) you know right but he he that line is like in the movie he's framed as a bad person when he says that line because the whole movie is about him killing an innocent man right 
and they're like you know they're in court to figure out why 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 the fuck did you do that and um you know it but it but in in only hearing that like only remembering that line you think like oh that's badass that's so badass you said the fucking tom cruise that's so cool and it's like like uh no that's not <laughs> he's not a good person right but you know it's it's there's a bajillion examples of like scenes where like people hella like kind of missed the point you know you know what i'm saying yeah. and yeah, it, basically basically we're better than everyone else and everyone yeah else basically is a, a sniveling imbecile and we're the only smart ones in the I, world, I think i am better at i'm like a master at looking at cartoons and being like yep i'm pretty smart i watch <laughs> cartoons in a smart way uh, just just finished watching season six of Adventure Time, and let's just say I have some opinions, some pretty big brain opinions about Adventure Time. Oh wow! I don't I don't have much to add. I haven't seen Adventure Time. <laughs> really? Well, wow. like I've seen random episodes, obviously. Wait, hold up. I actually watched it. N- not trying to not trying to like not trying to out you, but what year did you graduate high school? Uh, well, technically, I was supposed. You don't to have to. 2020 oh oh you got that covid graduation (laughs) (laughs) yeah nice nice um i graduated in 2015 so um i'm I'm a little bit more of that like peak adventure time generation yeah oh basically right (laughs) like i'm about to be 30 in two more years right (laughs) but um uh yeah so you 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 were kind of more at the tail end of it i remember when it came out and I was, I was like, what? I was probably like eight. It was like around when Tangled, it was like 2010 when it came out, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, I was pretty young still. I mean, I probably, if I was able to sit down and watch it, I probably would have liked it. But I, mm-hmm. most of my um, childhood, I didn't have TV, like cable, unless I was staying with yep. my dad. Same here. So yeah, I didn't really get to watch that many like Cartoon Network shows. Wait, hold up. Wait, hold hold up. Your parents are what? divorced? Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Well well hold up. Explains are you everything. are you serendipity? What the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. You're serendipity. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to do that. Figured it out. Someone should do that to me saying like wait, wait cheesy, you you have big titties? Wait, hold up. Are you Bongo? <laughs> <laughs> are you Bongo from Bongo and Luna? I I'm both actually. I got the big titties and the big ass surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and i made myself super make, pale <laughs> i don't know if you've done this but have you made a, a male character with like giant balls yet <laughs> i i should i just like have to um i did come up with a couple of male characters basically and <laughs> i guess i came up with, well, with fucking giant balls but um <laughs> i i i came up with this one clown i've been um refocusing myself on a doing more nsfw art because i actually applied for like a my city is gonna have their first hentai con right yeah exactly right so i applied and i'm hoping i get in because then i'm gonna try to crank out more like nsfw so i did (laughs) i did come up with this guy like a couple months ago (laughs) oh i remember ugly bastard oh right exactly and um (laughs) i did come up with this other guy too and i um i made a guno guno gonzalez okay. <laughs> um i i if you may have noticed it's um i have not made them attractive to male <laughs> to the to the female gaze as you can see um i'm what pretty you sure might... i know some women who would love guno there's some women who would like appreciate it but um i like guno i don't really like ugly bastard oh no ugly... some woman who would love ugly bastard <laughs> <laughs> there's um you know what that just reminded me because um my uh when uh, when my partner went to work um they were talking about the barbie movie with their co-worker and they talked about like the scene in the in the barbie movie where when the kens like invent the patriarchy and they make yeah. all the Barbies into maids. Um, like my partner's coworker was kind of like, she was kind of like, oh, low key, that's my fantasy though. Like low key, <laughs> oh god, I would kill to just be a maid for a guy and like just wear a cute outfit and bring him beer. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Dude, that's people say the most out of pocket fetish shit. Like coworkers, oh yeah, oh they no, will you're say right. anything. My boyfriend's yeah. coworker <laughs> said, like told 
my boyfriend that he was into BBWs. Nice. Like, that's what he jerked off to. Like, he looked up, like, <laughs> websites of, of big, beautiful women, and the, that's what he jerked oh, off hold to. Up. Why would you tell Wait. someone that? Did, did this come up out of random, or did you... Let, I No, I, I think that was just, like, uh, out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> I don't think Matthew was sharing his fetishes. So. Okay, because well, cause I... Not to brag, I like to bring up my fetishes casually. You know, I'm, I'm very casual about, about bringing up the clown thing to people. <laughs> It depends on in what mood I'm in. Like, yeah. if I'm really tired and I hate my life, I will probably start talking about my fetishes like, <laughs> while I'm at work. Just anything to keep me awake. I mean, sometimes so I say to catch you guys off are guard. Both the coworker that talks about their fetishes. Look, if I was um, if I was your boyfriend's coworker, I would bring up the clown thing so casually. <laughs> He would, he would be he would say like it's so weird my coworker brought up the clown fetish but so casually he would say that if I if I was your co- if I was <laughs> yeah, their so coworker I really like to fuck clowns <laughs> um. <laughs> okay uh cool. okay this guy is kind of weird hey you want to listen to my podcast <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so that's so epic but um you see if the Barbie movie wanted to be intersectional. What it what should have happened was that after they destroyed the patriarchy, some of the Barbies should have been like, you know, I actually kind of like being a maid because <laughs> those That's women true. exist. <laughs> oh, that would the discourse would have been so good. Mm-hmm. Some of the it Barbies would still be going on. Like, I don't think anyone's yeah. talking about that movie now. Yeah, yeah true. true. I, I hate the last Barbie discourse where it's kind of like, uh, why didn't Barbie get nominated for more awards? And oh it's my like, God, I dude, wanted to blow my brains out. Like, p- no Please joke. watch another movie. Please <laughs> watch another. Please watch more movies. Because, like, when, when people were saying, yeah, there's, like, way more, way more feminist films being nominated, Barbie is very just entry-level, guys. Come the fuck on. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, it's literally like when you compare it to the other movies that mm-hmm. actually are, you know, good. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, Barbie's good, but it's it's very, you know, surface level. Yeah. Film, obviously, which isn't a bad thing, but it is. Um, right. Like, like you compare it to like other movies that are actually like very well competently you, made. With, like, you a really you could get it. You, you get it something a little bit more. I, um, uh, I've been kind of yeah. like revalu- <laughs> re re va- revaluing like phrases like when people say like oh i like this like oh the difference between favorite movies and like the greatest yeah. movies i've been kind of like re- rethinking that because i've been re-watching some old digi bro content um because <laughs> that's I'm, always fun that is always fun but it's um <laughs> before before uh D- digi took the crazy pills <laughs> and went it went insane but um like uh th- there's a lot of very interesting stuff being said and I think, um, I think instead of like saying stuff like, I, I notice like what people kind of consider like the greats or stuff like that is is mostly kind of just more like accessible stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, it, it's it's there's this whole kind of like, and I, I think I brought this up last episode, but I am seeing the rise of a, of a new type of like Godzilla fan. And, I saw your tweet about that. Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, have you seen Godzilla minus one? Nope. I uh, haven't seen any Godzilla movie. It's fine. Um, I, I would recommend you watch Godzilla Minus One like as your first one because that's like incredibly accessible. It's a very accessible yeah. Godzilla movie, right? And um, but what's I don't like is that there's like this these people that call themselves Godzilla fans, but like they only like that movie. And it's so like and, and they shit on all the other movies, right? Like that they're, they're ashamed that that this this good ass movie is like attached to this oh man this shitty ass franchise and they had one good movie and it's like shitty ass franchise how dare you <laughs> how dare you do how dare you say it to godzilla i mean <laughs> my um association with godzilla is when i was growing up um i have like an autistic cousin nice and he his special interest was godzilla for yeah. a couple years so he would sit in the living room and just watch like all the old Japanese Godzillas mm-hmm. and he would like imitate like Godzilla's cry <laughs> and stuff and it was awesome. Wait, hold on. Um, Wait, am I your cousin? Is that you? Is that the no, here? no. He'd go like, ear. That's so base. No, that that's so cool that you could like, because when you made that sound in my head, I'm like, I think I know which kaiji that is. 
I think I, yeah. I think I know which one that is. <laughs> and he he loved like Mothra and stuff. Nice. So like nice. I know some of the I know some of the Godzilla creatures or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I've never I've like seen some of the Godzilla movies, but like just bits and pieces from like him watching it when I was mm-hmm. like really little. Um, so I, I gotta get your cousin on the podcast. That that should <laughs> yeah. be that's who I should bring on next is your cousin. We gotta talk Godzilla. I, ha- I have like a fondness for Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. I don't actually know anything about it. So I think it, I probably would like it. Yeah, I, I do recommend, like, uh, Minus One because it's very mm-hmm. accessible. And it's so funny how, like, these kind of, like, new pretentious Minus One fans are because, like, oh, you think you're so cool because you like the most accessible Godzilla movie. Ooh, look at you. Yeah, yeah. come on, buddy. Like, I, I think it's more impressive if you liked a shittier movie, actually. <laughs> yeah. But it's like um yeah it's it's funny because like um watching uh that this godzilla minus one and like seeing like how much it pulls from like a bunch of other godzilla movies that these guys are shitting on it's just so kind of like you know like that you you guys aren't doing like the proper research and whatnot they don't even know like they Mm -hmm. can't even appreciate those aspects because they can't appreciate the movies that built godzilla minus one yeah godzilla minus one is like on the shoulder of giants you know there's yeah. other movies out there that it's it's pulling from directly but um i think um i think godzilla minus one and like shin gojira i mean are like the most like accessible godzilla movies because like those are like directly reboots you know and and godzilla movies don't really get rebooted Right, like what usually happens is that the first one is canon, and then they just ignore all the other ones in between. That's a very common thin thing that happens in in these movies. But um, I don't know. A lot of Godzilla movies expect you to know who Godzilla is, and with minus one and Shin Gojira, it's kind of like the the universe, the in story universe, is finding out what a Godzilla is. So you know, you're like you get a little bit more. You know, you're you're learning it with the characters, right? You you don't just like watch like fucking godzilla versus guy again and it's like oh okay the care all the characters know who the fuck godzilla is I, and you're like never seen a godzilla movie you're like i don't know what the fuck a godzilla is um aliens show up before godzilla shows up in that movie so you're like okay is godzilla always associated with aliens like you know it's a uh, it's all over the place but it's it's those movies that like kind of pull you know i don't like it when like people like shit on the stuff that like pulls a lot of the fan base in you know right because it's it's so kind of like why like what is this why need why do you need to feel elite about like liking godzilla you know like what is this you know why do you need to be special for liking godzilla um you know yeah that that is pretty stupid i i haven't seen much like discourse about godzilla minus oh you're not in that circles (laughs) no no i'm not the godzilla fandom um (laughs) But yeah, that that does sound ridiculous. People saying that it, people watch one semi artsy movie and all of a sudden they're like super super oh, smart. Oh, I'm big brain, else is an idiot. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, that's um, that, there's so they're so kind of like there's like there's like idiots like everywhere, or there's like people who are annoying like on every side. Because like you have you have the fucking like pretentious people who they watch one movie and they're all like oh yeah I'm so big brain than everybody else and then there's people on the opposite side who like call you pretentious for even like mentioning like one foreign film you know like mm-hmm. like yeah. um there was this talk about like the meme about like oh a uh, film bros like shitting on you for liking Avengers when their favorite movie is like a black and white like Serbian film that came out like in 1935 you know and it's so like um I, I remember someone saying like it's, it's it's funny how like they do a pretty good job to not like to to avoid all the countries that aren't like in Asia or or all countries where like that you could easily call them a xenophobic you know they they specifically pick like eastern european countries the kind of safer countries to make fun of right you know but um to me like i'm i think it's super cool when like someone mentions a movie i've never heard of because it's kind of like oh a new movie a new movie i never heard of that's so based someone's if it's someone's favorite movie and it's one you haven't heard of and and especially if it's like a foreign film you're like that must be fucking good yeah (laughs) exactly god there's so many like 
yeah oh god there's something about like when you gotta watch movies like older movies from like different time periods you kind of just see like what the not not necessarily what the zeitgeist is but like what kind of like what were like the barriers they could like cross that we don't have like nowadays you know like yeah um there there's just kind of like i people talk about like oh you can't make blazing saddles today right that's which is really fucking stupid but um you can't there's a lot other a lot of movies you can't make today are like anything that's like directly making the u.s as the bad guy right yeah because like even in the fucking marvel movies no one will pay for it yeah exactly (laughs) like even in the marvel movies they go so out of their way to make sure like the military isn't the bad people what what it is is that if there's a bad guy who's in the military he's he by himself is working independently or he's just like one bad apple that's like circumventing like everything you know and that's kind of like why I don't like um, the fucking uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. You guys seen that movie? <laughs> yeah. No, I I used seen to love that movie, movie and then I got sick of it. Oh, uh, well, I'll, I'll just make it quick because I, I don't want to like <laughs> keep like, me or you out of this topic. But yeah, yeah. but something that's super annoying about that movie is like it, it's a decent action movie. If you would just watch it for the action, it, it's not too bad. But what I kind of don't like is that like this movie advertised itself as like the political thriller and it's a little bit more like the topics they're talking about a little bit more like real world topics but all they do is like they babify they they like make they make it more into a cartoon like they make it more like for babies you know yeah and what what i mean is that like um oh uh the whole story is that there's this like plot there's there's this this plan to kind of like have a weapon that could like predict whether or not someone's going to be like a threat to the world before they even do anything right psychopath right exactly so, so they're making the psychopath but it, but in, in this in this movie in this movie they're they're just giant like floating like turret gun tanks yeah. that fly around and just shoot people which is already kind of really fucking stupid but um like uh so what at the start it kind of seems like oh, wow, this agency that Captain America is a part of, maybe it's still an arm of, like, American imperialism. You know, these aren't fully the bad guys. But no, it turns out that everything evil they ever done was actually a Hydra agent. Hydra is, like, the default bad guy. Like, oh, oh, thank God. No one one here is, like, this weird kind of, like, gray area. There's just good guys and bad guys. At the end of the day, that's all, right? anyone who was ever bad in the government and actually they even do this thing where like they retcon like a lot of like politicians who were like bad people to previous marvel characters it turns out they were also hydra so it, so everyone who was ever mean or bad or evil to any like marvel superhero and they worked for the government oh it turns out they were just hydra they were just the bad guy so it's fine it's not like this nuanced thing where like um these people are they they work for a, a bigger higher like like kind of like status quo and the system that keeps people like oppressed because they benefit from it like no they're just they're just higher they're just bad guys so it just is becomes it, more like a cartoon you know is it that way in the comics do you know or did yeah you the, uh, yeah yeah kind of <laughs> in broad strokes because <laughs> the comics come from somewhere th- there's this thing with like in, in comics it's like actually i think in the comics they do do it way more clever and um and it's because like you, you can't just do a you can't have a definitive statement on it because there's a bajillion writers there's a bajillion different creative teams there's a bajillion different directions yeah. so, like sometimes the universe is not too consistent with each other right and it's and like if you learn to accept all that you're going to enjoy the comics like way more right cuz um and, and and sometimes and sometimes you can't even be too like sometimes you can't even be too like real about it or be like too um you, sometimes you, you gotta like dumb it down for people because if you try to go a little bit too nuanced or smart people get hella mad at you right mm-hmm. because um i remember a couple years back you're probably too young to remember this but there was this big thing with probably like wasn't born yet. yeah true you weren't born yet but <laughs> <laughs> in the in the comics they made captain america into like a into like a nazi well not not necessarily a, yeah, not necessarily like a Nazi. He he just went full fascist. It turned out that Cap was like a Hydra agent the whole time, the whole time, the whole continuity. He was actually a secret Hydra agent, right? And and that really pissed off people because they're like, well, Hydras are like Nazis, right? Well, not really. Hydras like 
the the safe Nazi, if you will. Like they're they're the Nazi that they will sell on like an action figure, right? Because it doesn't have like an actual hate symbol on it. Because they they realize that maybe we shouldn't sell like figures where where a character has a swastika on them. So instead, we just make them Hydra, and and they do. And here's the thing: they do that like in every in every like piece of medium when you want to have your own version of the Nazis, but you want to like you know you don't want to sell swastikas to kids. You um you make your own secret evil organization that like that may have been like a spinoff of the Nazis, but they're not the Nazis actually, right? Yeah, you know, and and red ribbon. Yeah, like red ribbon, and in Common Rider they have Shocker, who who are directly like kind of like a oh, splinter yeah. group of the Nazis, but them themselves aren't like they're not upholding Nazi ideas because like they're very diverse in who they hire, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's um yeah, it's like this, it's like a safe kind of like route. So yeah, so but but people really do conflate Hydras with Nazis all the time, and it whatever, who fucking cares? It doesn't matter. Uh, um, but listener listener if you want to get wasted before you listen to this podcast you have to take a take a shot every time we say movie and every <laughs> time cheesy says nazi right exactly <laughs> my totally two blasted my two nazi. favorite words movies and nazis <laughs> actually you might call me uh, some bit of a movie nazi if you will no 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 no, no. <laughs> you notice that um people don't like use nazi as an insult no more <laughs> yeah like you don't I hear because yeah, pe- people are proud of it. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, you don't hear people say feminazi no more. That used to be the term like back in that the late two thousands was to well not late two thousands the er, the late nineties you, you would hear the term feminazis. But then we, it turned out Nazis were base, so you know we wouldn't <laughs> we wouldn't do that to feminists. We wouldn't call them base. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, superhero movies suck balls, and if you like superheroes. <laughs> You're bad. You're not a good person, actually. <laughs> yeah. Super uh, villains are way cool. Super villains are way cool. Um, <laughs> they're based. Uh, read villain verse. I'm actually. Yeah. Um, I'm actually. I I want to. Um, I'm gonna do something that I'm gonna do the forbidden technique with villain verse. Uh, maybe next year or so. <laughs> but basically, I might just remake it from the start. I'm, I'm like on the I'm like on the fence about it because I got people. That is the forbidden technique. That is the forbidden to, technique to restart the comic, right? Yeah. But but I think um, there's a couple of things because like I think what what made me kind of more interested and wanted to do that was um the the author for uh, you guys know the you guys know the the manga uh, was it Golden Kaimu? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. So in that um, so that wrapped up recently. And the author for that uh, manga, like before she did that manga, she had another one that got canceled that was about hockey. And so then she did Golden Kaim- Kaimu and, and it did Gangbusters, right? It's great. No, so now she has more power and influence. So she's going to go back and just remake the hockey manga because that's, that's the thing she really wanted to do, right? And, uh, huh. and, and that made me think about like, oh, well, you know, I, I want to get in a better financial state where I could go back and just like remake Villainverse from like the the start. Not necessarily, nothing too much is going to change because like, I think the outline that I wrote like, uh, I don't know, four years ago is still like a pretty good outline. Like there's nothing about it that's like super crazy that I want to fucking change, right? So, um, yeah. I do want to, and I also, and I think it'd be a good time to kind of like, cause I have a bigger following to kind of like bring in some of the newer people. Cause people see villain verse in my, in my profile and my bio and they have no idea what that is. Right. Cause I, I barely even talk about it nowadays, you know? Um, Wait, would you still, uh, do it traditional or would you switch? No, nah, I think I'll switch it to digital, to be honest. That's what I was going to ask. Cause I feel like. Although um, traditional comics have like a super unique like charm, mm-hmm. and I really love traditional comics, mm-hmm. it is so difficult, especially as an independent artist with like no editors or no like help whatsoever, and then have like two out. day jobs. Yeah, yeah, with a job uh, to get them out in a reasonable time. Yeah, and, like pump them out in a way. That's why, like, I wanted to do. I wanted to start making a traditional comic, but. I just, I'm like, I don't know if that's feasible. Like, it's, um, <laughs> you have, have to, to be, 
I, I feel like the, the only people that are making it traditionally are people who have already been just doing that for like decades traditionally, yeah. you know, um, yeah. or like super kind of like indie people who have like the yeah. time to do that. Um, I'll oh, I have the time. I just, it's just fucking hard. <laughs> no, it, it is. It's it's the whole thing you have to like jump into. Um, yeah. Something that I thought like, I've been, tell, tell me if you relate to this feeling, Mimiori, but I've been like very kind of like not alienated per se but a part of me feels like i i'm not like not that i'm not focused but i i might have like made a mistake in like trying to do so many things at the same time maybe because like it seems like the people who have the most success are people who just like stick to one thing and just keep doing that for like a a year or two right yeah but like I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm, right. And I think I understand I, what you how you feel about that. But, you know, go ahead. Yeah, and I feel like I might have blundered by having like a lot of like starting and stopping too many comics, right? But there's this kind of like fear, there's this kind of like anxiety I get where like I'll do something and I see someone having like luck doing something else. And I was like, Oh, I wish I could try doing that. And a part of me is kind of like, well, you know, this comic that I'm currently working on is not that popular. I could just drop it and not too many people are gonna care. Right. And that's true. Like I've dropped comics and not and there hasn't been too much of an uproar of people who like, you know, get mad or anything. Right. But yeah. but maybe if I stick to it, it would have been like, I don't know, because like I could say that now. But like I think back about like what was what was my mindset when I dropped it, you know, because like I feel like all you could really say about things that you might have felt were like mistakes or decisions you now don't agree with. Is like you you only made the choices that made sense to you at the time, you know, right? Yeah. But there's just I don't know. There's kind of like, ah oh man, like it, it's weird because like I'm I I'm in like so many like fucking like boxes of stuff that like, um I I cannot be recognized. Like I don't I don't want to say I I have I have peers. I have like people who are like at my level and people that I like who I'm I'm friends with like uh, Mimi Yori, right? <laughs> and um you know they're, they're i got peers but at the same time i i don't at the same time i feel like um i don't have peers i guess like it, it's so i i understand what you mean because i mean not to you know boost your confidence too much but i think <laughs> you have a very unique um like art style and way that you make comics and like way that you make your content Mm -hmm. that it's kind of hard to find someone who like you can relate to completely in how they produce content you know what i mean mm. i feel like i feel like everyone kind of feels like that but there's also like yeah you feel like you have unique struggles but there's also other content creators who you are very similar to mm -hmm. yeah like, despite that but i feel like you are like it's hard to to think of someone who i'd put in the same box as you Mm -hmm. in terms of what you make and like what kind of content you make because you you do like you know you do like the the four panel comics i mean i do i do those too but you also do like you know you did villain verse for a while which was traditional which had a very unique art style and like i don't know and then you did um the alien girlfriend comic mm -hmm. uh, for a bit and that was like it was different from what you usually make but it was still like good mm -hmm. um and then you do like nsfw stuff too and it's like all of them are good but it's kind of like you said you're kind of spreading yourself through all these different avenues mm -hmm. so it's hard to find like one box that you can relate to with all of those mm -hmm. <laughs> like right. another like content creator yeah because i i basically have um serendipity and I very rarely do I, four panel. I guess anymore. among us, girl. I guess. Yeah, I <laughs> right. Yet, <guess> <laughs> yet so. serendipity. And um, if if I was if I was if I'm if I was better at my financial side than I am with me, people would probably know you more for like more extra soul stuff too. But um, yeah, yeah. There are some some extra soul fans, but um. Oh yeah, definitely. Since, since the comic is over, it's kind of. Yeah. No, no, I don't talk about it as much anymore. No, I get you. I am. I mean, I've said this before. I'm fucking. I'm. I'm work. 
I'm figuring the fuck out. I'm figuring the fuck out right here. <laughs> right. I'm not I'm not acting like I don't don't think you're like uh berating me or anything about the thing. It's just that like, damn, you know you know what's more ex- expensive than like losing a car in a fire? Getting a new one right away. That's that's also yeah. expensive, right? So I've been I've been throwing a lot of a lot of uh a lot of sticks in my way, you know. Um yeah. But um, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that can change pretty fucking soon. Um, you know, I'm hoping like I don't know, like maybe like money falls out of the sky or something. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. I actually um recently I got I'm gonna get some money because I I was part of a class action lawsuit against Lyft recently, and uh, really? yeah, I did, and apparently I'm gonna get like around a thousand coming my way yeah yeah so i don't know when though because okay you know they probably told me but i didn't even really look (laughs) but yeah that's fucking that's fucking coming my way you know um yeah yeah i I feel like i'm i might be spreading myself a little thin at the same time i don't feel like i've done anything that's like a bad idea you know like yeah i mean i mean i don't think i think all this well what i was gonna say is i kind of got sidetracked but um you you it's like you said you do stuff because that's what you want to do that's mm-hmm. what you're able to do at that point mm-hmm. i personally if i i wouldn't be able to just stick to one project for like a whole year because my brain doesn't work that way i need to have multiple outlets yeah to like get stuff done if i if i only work on one thing i get burnt out and yeah. i know like people use that word all the time but it's true like i oh, cannot yeah just do one thing for like a certain amount of time because it it just like it's impossible for me no no i i agree that's kind of like why like and what i would want my perfect scenario to me to be is like if i could have like a comic that i could like a long form comic that i could pump out like on a on a schedule that's like nice and consistent yeah 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 (laughs) if if i just made serendipity okay i'll make my own depressed magical girl comic right but basically, um, if I could just have like a consistent comic that does make me a decent amount of money back while at the same time, like, because I'm so down to just collab with people. I, I love collabing with people. I love doing Extra Souls. Um, but I think what's kind of like, I think what's kind of annoying is that like, um, it's it's hard. It's not too hard, but it, it's kind of hard finding like the right collab partner, you know? Or, like, yeah. someone's, like, committed. I'm pretty sure we've all been in a situation where, like, we have a friend in real life who's like, oh, we should make a comic together. And that doesn't fucking happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, so many people. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah. yeah. So many people have come up to me like, oh, yeah, you should make a comic about this. And it's, like, the worst idea I ever fucking heard in my life. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. God. I um, tell, tell me if you relate to this. Do you guys... um? This might sound really fucking evil and mean to say, but do you have trouble like listening to other people's ideas for for like stories or comics? Um, no, not really. I I guess it's just me. Get that many people. <laughs> I don't know how many people you have in your DMs like being like, "Hey, cheesy, I have this really good idea for a comic." <laughs> Listen. Uh, <laughs> but I don't really get that many people talking to me mm. about that. Um and I guess I guess it just comes down to it's kind of annoying when people have an idea that's just been done like right. a jillion times. And then it's like, okay, well well, what's the point? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's already been done. Right, I exactly. I think um I think it's all about like I I try to only share ideas with and I'm I'm pretty sure I fucking failed this all the time, but I try to share my ideas with people who like I feel like already like me or like I could talk to them very easily, you know, because like yeah. sometimes like you could describe an idea and it could come off like the most fucking boring idea ever. Like, <laughs> oh, the, the this thing happens and then this thing happens and this thing happens, you know, right. Um, I always yeah. try to like think of like what's the most simplest way to tell an idea or whatnot, you know, or like um, I'm the kind of guy that like I really don't trust people's movies recommendation because I feel like people recommend movies in like the most boring way possible right 
Yeah. And um, I it's some movies I will for years will never check out until the right person says like the right words to me, you know. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, like do it. Oh yeah, this and that, or you know, or like um. I think the most interesting is when a movie gets mixed reviews. I find those those movies. That's the kind of movies I want to check out. Like, oh, the reviews are mixed. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. There might be a little sauce to this. That's right. true. Because that makes me think, like, what side am I going to land on? I'm right. I'm curious to see, like, what what my opinion is going to be if mm-hmm. it's so divisive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what was my... Oh, yeah. So I try to, like, make sure I describe. Like, with some people, like, you could kind of give them the whole, like, if you're pitching it to, like... A CEO kind of thing. Oh yeah, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a Star Wars meets a Naruto kind of thing, <laughs> right? But for some people, that's like that's not always gonna work because like you know, they they're gonna feel like you're coming off too corporate or like robotic when you say that. So you gotta like be like, oh yeah, this is like this is like gay, this is like uh this is like gay, this is like Evangelion, but it is gay sex or something. You know, you gotta like find the right words that perk up people. You know. Right. Yeah, well, you have to you have to know who your audience is, obviously. Right, exactly. That's uh yeah, <laughs> fucking uh telling people your ideas 101, you know. You got to really fucking know who your audience is. Do you ever um tell me if you've ever been in in a situation like this where you see someone's like you ever like really want to give someone criticism but like you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to intrude. <laughs> um on Twitter, I guess sometimes like very rarely Mm. I'll be like, oh, I feel like mm, maybe you could have done this or this, but I, yeah, I never, I never do it. Yeah. Actually. I kind of just think it in my head because I really don't, it, it, especially on Twitter, criticism is really hard to give if it's oh, not yeah. to your like best friend. True. It comes off on Twitter, like everyone's on the defense all the time because there's so many just like abrasive people being mm-hmm. assholes. So that like like art criticism is really difficult, and then like you could give criticism to someone, and then someone could reply like, "What the fuck? You're an asshole! Like, leave them alone." It's like, no, it's it's not what we're doing here. <laughs> right, exactly. That's why I, I tend to not. I keep criticism in the DMs. You know, that's yeah, usually where it's yeah, safe. Yeah. There's this one person. I won't say their name. Actually, um, put it in the chat. <laughs> actually wait you know what i'll say their name but we'll we'll be we'll bleep it out all right because okay. you know this person uh mimi Ori. but um i gave some art criticism to like like okay. a couple months ago because um i was like looking through twitter and i saw their art and they tend to just draw characters facing forward yeah that's yeah, like yeah. all of their art right and i don't know i was i guess i was in a mood i wasn't like angry but i felt very loose that day when i saw that and i'm like <laughs> ah. yeah and i was like ah, fuck it and i just dm and say like dude you gotta draw like characters from the other angles dude. <laughs> you gotta seriously draw character you gotta like it, it's funny because like the fucking three-fourth like face angle gets memed a lot like oh that's like the default face angle and like like if you look at the fucking in our chat, like those two fucking clowns I posted are three fourth like face angles, right? Yeah. But like it's funny when someone overly uses another angle, right? And it's like dude, yeah. you, have, you gotta like you gotta do other angles and whatnot, right? And like I was talking to them about it. Like I mean, like they know me, so like you know they they know I wasn't trying to fucking bully them or anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, we were talking about him. I said, like, do you not do like the the line trick when you like rough draft a character? And they they didn't know what that was. So I um well they I they they didn't know, I guess, that it had a name or anything, right? So I showed right. them and I'm like, well like, you know, I got one of their pictures and I like kind of like did it real quick to be like, okay, well, you know, you could have this character face this way, right? And I showed them and they're like, oh okay. And they, they seem to get it. I mean, if anything not to be too hard on them. They're just they're just kind of randomly doodling this. This isn't like their fucking art portfolio or anything, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's like whatever. That's another thing too, because like I think sometimes people are too harsh in their criticisms on things that people weren't trying, you know? Like I don't feel like it's yeah. it's worth criticizing anything if the person wasn't like doing their best, you know? Right? Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um I yeah, I um I do notice, you know, some oops, <laughs> <laughs> some, some moots, right? Yeah. Um, uh, doing like you know, and obviously all of us, like you said, like fall into 
like drawing similar stuff because it's comfortable mm -hmm. to when, it, when you're like doodling a character or something mm -hmm. that you've drawn a million times it's like you know um but yeah i've noticed people kind of sticking to their comfort zone and not branching out that much and i've done the same thing but i yeah i just tend to just not say anything because again i don't know if they actually like especially if we're not like super good friends i don't mm -hmm. know if they really want criticism they yeah just be having fun with it so like i tend to just not um do it but i understand especially like um with like the person we were talking about i feel like they'd be pretty chill like you said yeah about it so and it's not again it's it doesn't have to be like a big deal it's just like oh you know yeah try <laughs> this little thing yeah and right? it, i think it's it's good to give criticism to you to people um in a very like nice way and try to actually help them i think mm -hmm. that's actually a good thing um and it's it it's not bullying unless you're a complete <laughs> asshole about it right exactly you know <laughs> if, you, if you really didn't like them why would you want them to get better at it you know yeah yeah that that being said there there is this kind of like opposite side i'm i'm on because um I don't know. You've probably seen this tweet go around, but well, do you remember? Do you remember Puppy Chan? Remember that whole thing? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll keep posting that picture that they made where it's like how their art used to look like, and then mm. when it just be when they just decided to de default all their characters to like thick blob characters, right? You know. Yeah. And and people are like, "Wow, look at how downhill their art went," and and with me, something a kind of attitude I've been kind of like choosing to follow now is like i really don't care if an artist is bad at doing art online you know or like oh wow they suck now it's like oh well whatever okay cool that doesn't affect yeah. me you know right because people really get hung up about that and i think it's yeah I think it's mostly if like the person they're talking to it talking about is like very popular. So like I I mean I guess I get that. Like everyone's talking about them. But it's like I don't know. I don't like oh do I prefer Puppy Chan's older stuff? Yeah, sure. But like it doesn't hurt me that like they decided to go this direction, right? Whatever. It kinda just reminds me of um like people making fun of celebrities or whatever for being bald yeah. or like being fat. It's like you're making fun of someone who's a bad person for being like like a fat fuck, mm -hmm. but then it bounces back to your friends who <laughs> like are overweight, and it's like, what? The oh yeah, I didn't do anything. Yeah, that. So mean. it kind of reminds me of of that because like obviously Puppy Chan's kind of a shitty person. Oh so yeah, for other things. Yeah. Um, and it also reminds me. I don't know if you've seen this artist, and I don't even remember their name, but there's an artist that's been blowing up semi recently where they just draw like random characters with like hourglass figures like giant boobs and giant ass oh yeah that guy like puppy chain. yeah that guy yeah, yeah and people <laughs> and people are shitting on their art saying like you can't draw anything other than like an hourglass figure or whatever <laughs> and like i don't know if they're a bad person or not but who the fuck cares yeah if they want to draw every if they want to draw fucking the the geometry dash square with giant tits and giant ass who gives a fuck yeah it's their art who, who it's their page <laughs> you can draw whatever you want leave them alone man <laughs> it it is kind of it i remember when like people were first looking at that guy it's like oh wow no for real they, he just that's just all he's drawing <laughs> i yeah, i but, think who cares? yeah yeah no there's nothing like wrong with that um i i i, I am a big fan of like the He's, he's like a he's almost like a he's probably like a very strong warrior if you will to kind of just stick to one thing right yeah. <laughs> what's the the bruce lee quote i do not fear the man who has practiced a thousand kicks i fear the man who's practiced one kick a thousand times <laughs> yeah <laughs> right because yeah. I, I think i don't know that you have to have a, i'm not to jerk him off a little you gotta have like a, a strong psyche to stick to one thing you know i mean like this is all yeah. i'm drawing forever especially now that he's or i i think it, i don't pronouns i don't know especially since they uh have been getting getting so much hate and yeah shit on every time they post it's like to keep on posting the same thing it's kind of chad it is very like, chad i don't know if they're a horrible person or not so i'm not gonna say that like, yeah yeah whatever agree, yeah <laughs> fucking it's, it's, it's like, an alpha move if you will yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> the post the same shit over and over again. That's really yeah, base. It's, it's just like it's just like Pup Chan. It's like you might like their old art, but they're drawing what they want. Mm -hmm. And so so why should they care? There's really you this know? there's really this huge attitude and like not 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 trying to call out anyone, but mostly like younger cartoon reviewer types who who get very like it, it almost feels like they have the impression that art can hurt them. That like bad <laughs> art can hurt them. Like, oh, this is hurting me. Oh, er. and, I, and I'll say this. I, I've probably mentioned this take before, but I really was like, um, when, when everyone was shitting on the Velma show, I like did not see it. I didn't, I didn't watch the fucking show, but I didn't get all the like hate towards it. Cause it's like, damn, do y'all really care that much about this? Is this really important? And then recently, it came back into mind because uh, there was a TikTok talking about someone made like an animated short about the Velma show where it was trying to do like this, this thing where like, oh, it's like a found footage thing where they interview all the characters from Velma and they're trying to frame it as like Velma's like a secret psychopath. The, the one specifically oh, from I the Velma that. show. Yeah, yeah. And, and, a, and I saw this. I didn't see the short. I saw clips of it. And on the TikTok, all I commented was like, damn, can people just say they just didn't like a show instead of like spending their whole time making a whole short about it? Like, I mean, I guess like the artistic value, right? But like ultimately all you're saying is like, I did not like the Velma show, right? And it's very like, damn, you yeah. could have done a, a bajillion different things. And I, and I get that you chose to pick this, but it's so, I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? Guess... It doesn't hurt me, but it feels so like, okay, if, if all you're saying, I hate the Velma show, then all right, cool, nice, you're so cool. I guess uh, Has Been Hotel is the new Velma right now. Oh, yeah, ha I've, I've been seeing the Has Been hate kind of go down because, like, that's true. All the, all the conservative Christians are against it now, and it's like, oh, it's not cool to hate Has Been no more. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I, I do hear a lot of people say that, like, two episodes in, it suddenly gets, like, really good, and it's like, that's cool. I won't find out, but it, it, that's cool that, like, you know. I actually did watch the whole thing. Nice. Uh, what's um, the Mimiori review? Uh, my Mimiori review is that it's it's not really funny to me, <laughs> but it's yeah. interesting. Mm. And I think it's a good musical. Mm. Like, if I imagine the show on stage as like a musical mm -hmm. it would be pretty fucking good mm. um if they like reimagined it as like a stage play mm -hmm. it would be epic i think but as a cartoon and also like obviously maybe cut some of the jokes that aren't funny like yeah just saying fuck 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 cunt jiggly pussy whatever <laughs> um but yeah all the music is is pretty is pretty good um it's it's not really funny. Uh, a lot of the characters are really flat. Mm. Um, but it's not like the worst thing ever made. Yeah. And whatever your opinion is on Bibsy Pop, I personally, I think she's weird for the choices in her hiring process. And some of her opinions are cringe. But whatever your opinion on Bibsy Pop is, it's not the worst fucking thing ever made. Yeah. It's fine. No, no, you're right. It's. I remember when all the hate towards Izzy Pop first dropped. I think something that always makes me to never like kind of like believe any of the things people say is when they start like when they give you the laundry list of why they're awful. And there's like a huge laundry list, like right right from the get go. There's already like a huge laundry list of terrible things. I'm very like kind of like s skeptical about like yeah. and eh, like is she really like all these bajillion million things? Is she when you make like a giant list because the same thing happens with dream right um when you make a list like that the point of it is to make it as long as possible to right like make the shock value higher so inside the list there's going to be a bunch of stuff that is either like like who cares it's it's it's, it's made too big it's, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal or it's just made up mm -hmm. and it just makes the whole thing like uncredible right and it just sucks <laughs> right exactly but um I, it, it's good to see it's good to see uh us uh busy pop defenders winning <laughs> mm, no i don't want to be called a busy defender no, I'm, I'm a busy defender <laughs> I'm not, not, I'm not not really i just say that for a fucking meme i'm i'm probably never gonna watch husband 
um <laughs> on purpose but like it's uh yeah like i, I don't know like when pete like i'm so over i guess because i'm almost 30 i just don't care about like oh this cartoon sucks oh let's all hate this cartoon yeah. oh like damn like really like really like this is that like <laughs> oh god what was that uh recently some uh, Will Wheaton, like, did you guys see the Will Wheaton like hat oh, yeah. fucking essay <laughs> that he wrote about about Larry David like fucking manhandling Elmo? <laughs> did you guys hear no, about this? I didn't. Do you know who Larry David is, Mimi Ori? No. Okay. All right. This is gonna. I'm trying to explain. Trying to explain the lore. You ever heard of a show called Seinfeld? Yeah. Okay. So Seinfeld, um, one of the co-creators and directly credited as like the guy who's like who made it Seinfeld really funny the show is a guy called Larry David right Mm -hmm. and he yeah and um he he's actually who um are you aware of the the names of the characters on Seinfeld yeah okay so the character of George Costanza is based on Larry David like directly right like he was actually supposed to play George but he didn't want to because he didn't consider himself an actor so they got jason alexander to play george costanza right so but but george costanza is based on larry david right so anyway after seinfeld got canceled well after it it didn't get canceled they just decided to end the show after it ended um a couple years later a show came out called curb your enthusiasm where um it the main character is larry david and he's playing like uh like a he's playing an exaggerated version of himself right and um and the show is kind of meta with a lot of like Seinfeld stuff, right? Um, there's even like a season in Curb where it's basically the Seinfeld reunion, right? But anyway, Larry on the show, one of the one of the reoccurring plots on the Curb, like this is almost every episode on Curb, is that Larry will like accidentally piss off a group of people and he will try to make it better, but it gets worse and it, it bites them all in the ass or he does something like minor and it like, ruin something for him later on right and uh when yeah. when he when he fucking grabbed elmo's fucking face <laughs> that felt like such a fucking like curb your enthusiasm moment like that felt like something that would actually happen in the show right so um <laughs> just just kind of like that's why like you didn't that's why like I, from my end i didn't really see too many people pissed off at him because i'm like that feels like a larry david move that doesn't feel like out of character for him right and so anyway uh, there's this guy named we- Will Whedon, and um, he 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 has his own lore that goes back, right? He there's a lot of Will Will Whedon lore, but anyway, basically, yeah. he he's kind of like he's kind of like Reddit the celebrity, right? Like he's like he's like Reddit, <laughs> he's like Reddit man, basically, right? So he like he wrote this long ass essay about how traumatized he was to see Larry David just manhandle Elmo right like how fucking dare him man elmo is three years old <laughs> elmo is three years old fucking monster. you fucking piece of shit elmo he's like and he was saying some shit that felt like a fucking like skit like oh damn is he really like unironically saying this shit but he was saying stuff like so wait, yeah are you saying that our reality became a real life curb your enthusiasm episode yeah basically yeah okay. but it, it was pretty epic <laughs> God, I would I, fu- I would fucking kill uh, <laughs> to make that happen to me. But he was saying like, um, that I'm I'm gonna read a little bit of. It. I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's actually it's fucking long. I'm not gonna read this. But basically, Will Whedon said. So I heard about Larry David assaulting Elmo on live television. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but no. but didn't watch it until now because I knew it would upset me. <laughs> holy shit if it's even worse than i thought what the fuck is wrong with that guy elmo is like the best friend to multiple generations of children in the sesame street universe elmo is a child who is currently putting mental health and caring for others in the spotlight (laughs) and larry fucking david did did that and he, he adds like the fucking little dots like he's like pausing <laughs> like, larry david d- did that i thought it was going to be funny what what an asshole what a stupid self-centered tone and deaf stupid self-centered tone deaf asshole and what's so funny is that like 
this guy, he sounds like a bad guy in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like, this would be, like, the villain of a season of Curb. Like, he'd, he'd be trying to make, like, Larry's life, like, worse. <laughs> right? <laughs> so this is so fucking, like, oh, this is it's just so, like, yeah, I'm not going to read the fucking rest. It's too fucking long. But this is, like, so fucking, like, insane to me. <laughs> I love when people, I love when people water down the word assault. By yeah. Using it for the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> this is kind of like um when fucking Will Smith slapped Chris Rock and people were like, oh, he could have killed him. <laughs> he could have killed him. <laughs> I wish he did. That would be fucking cool. <laughs> They should just allow people to do that. They should just let actors do that. <laughs> They're the Oscars. That'd be fucking awesome. I, yeah, I wonder. I, I'm surprised that it didn't set like a precedent. For, <laughs> I wonder if if celebrities are scared to like, like heckle now. Mm. Because because the person they're heckling will just come up and beat their shit in on stage. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably gonna like i don't know like if, if they i i can't imagine another celebrity do that i mean i couldn't fucking imagine will smith doing it you know so i know that, it's so crazy right when i first heard it happen i'm like ha huh, that's funny but once i saw like how much attention that got i was like this is insane yeah. oh my fucking god <laughs> uh, so anyway i recommend you watch curb um i, th- I think the first season the the show has been going on for a good while because that first season, fucking George Bush was president when uh when that show came out. I don't I don't think you were even born when jo- George Bush was in <laughs> office, Mimi. I think you were. Yeah, I was born in 2015. Yeah, you're just a little bubby, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, but it yeah, it's just so fucking um. It's funny. It's funny. I, I I love this little. It is funny. I I love I love this reality. I love how like <laughs> super serious we are about like fictional characters. This kind of reminds me of, like a couple of days ago when people were mad about the Suicide Squad game and they're all like, "I can't believe it's only fucking killed Batman." And it's like Batman's not fucking real, dude. <laughs> Who cares? Mm-hmm. He's gonna die again. You're gonna see him die in another movie, and it's probably gonna be maybe tasteful. Who the fuck knows? It doesn't matter. He's not a real fucking person. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. This... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Face. People are people are really, really pathetic. Mm-hmm. True, exactly. Okay, but like if Serendipity died like at the end of the of the comic, I would probably be upset, to be honest. That would be a crazy way to end it. That would be crazy. Oh, she yeah. just dies and then it's over. They, the end. June and June and Saren get married and then like she dies and june is widowed they they they, they get gay married and then a mob comes yeah. in and, and kills them in their home and it's like the <laughs> end know. and it's like there's no happy endings the serendipity takes place in the real world now <laughs> 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 going the fucking super cynical ass we're out oh my god oh man you know what that reminds me uh maybe i should make mention of this now but um it's i it hasn't dropped yet of as recording of this episode. It hasn't dropped yet, but like the final episode of Thought Cops is gonna come out soon. Oh yeah. I did do a quick call in. Um, not gonna lie, I wasn't at my top of my game. I was kind of tired, <laughs> so like I, yeah, I a little loosey goosey. A little loosey goosey. You know, I wish I was loosey goosey. I was just kind of a little like I needed a nap, but <laughs> I was gonna take a nap, but then I saw they were taking in calls in for the fi- call in for the final episode, and I was like. Oh, I gotta jump in on this. I don't want to miss this, right? So I I jumped in. Uh, wasn't at my best. I'm probably gonna be fucking whatever on that episode. It doesn't matter. But I was. I only called in for a couple of minutes. But yeah, it's a uh, Fox Cops ending. What's a? Uh, what do you think about that, Miori? Um, it's sad. I mean, I I understand why. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, it kind of kind of sucks. I haven't listened to too many Thought Cops episodes, but it's definitely <laughs> like a show on my backlog mm-hmm. that I want to get to. Um, because I've mostly just listened. I mean, they're both pretty funny, right? Yeah, they are. I mostly just so, listen to like when they have a guest that I care about, yeah, mostly, okay. right? Because uh, yeah. that's kind of the annoying thing when you have a podcast that depends on like a lot of guests. You have to like, I don't know, you have to know a lot of them. Um, well, also with the thought cops, um, they talk about current events, 
Mm-hmm. So when you go back, they're talking about like Trump getting elected and stuff. <laughs> right. It's like, whoa, that's a blast from the past. Whoa, no way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, some of my favorite podcasts were created during the Trump administration. <laughs> but yeah, I know Grant and Kevin are, are very funny dudes. Mm-hmm, they are. I'm excited to see what they make next. Um, I'm sure it'll be good. I'm also, it also just sucks that hard drive, like, pooped the bed. Oh, yeah, it did. Uh, for Kevin. Yeah, oh, I... that was shit. I still see pe- hard drive, like, posting stuff, which is so weird. It's like, oh, yeah, nothing happened, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. and th- things are going as usual, normal. Everything's normal here. No, no major thing has it's, happened, right? It's just a super annoying situation in general for hard drive. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, because... It's like obviously they're in the wrong mm-hmm. for not listening to their employees when like literally all of the things that happened could have been avoided if they just had listened to their employees and took what they say into consideration bet- better and actually like do act mm-hmm. on the problems, you know, whatever. If you know about the hard drive situation, yeah. basically they're running out of money. And their employees said that um, they should start a Patreon. And then Hard Drive was like, no, I don't want to start a Patreon. And then they lost all their money and fired everyone. And after they fired everyone, they're like, okay, I'm going to start a Patreon now. Right. And it's like, oh, we just got rid of everyone that was funny. And like, haha, we yeah, need the money. Yeah, and they got rid of... Yeah, and like Kevin's articles were, were hilarious. Oh, yeah. Every, all of them. I... Um, so it just sucks because they were good. Mm-hmm, yeah. So... I I liked his um I did like his uh when Venture Bros got canceled his uh little favorite episodes from Venture Bros yeah it was really fucking good in my opinion um and it's a shame it's a shame to see that um I'm not like even listening to too many podcasts like nowadays to be honest there's not really anything I look forward to like I kind of fell off of a fucking um the loudest podcast not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for 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 there was a good while where I totally forgot it existed, and um, I, did they like go on a hiatus or something or? Uh, they they've been doing like on and off hiatuses. I think mm. I'm not really sure. Uh, they still make the podcast. I, I I'm in the same boat. Mm. Um, I used to listen to every single episode, and then I kind of stopped for a while. Mm-hmm. I used to have a bunch of podcasts I listened to, but then when I went to study abroad, um, I had no time. So I ended up just fall uh falling off of all the podcasts I listen to, and mm-hmm. now I don't listen to any almost almost any anymore. Right now I gotcha. Yeah, I um I the last podcast I was kind of really into was um was a cold cuts, but um I had to stop listening because like I got like so frustrated with all the things they say on that podcast. <laughs> like <laughs> you were so tilted. I I was like so tilted, and a part of me was like, this isn't healthy to like listen to people you. <laughs> say stuff you're like oh like oh my god i think it also doesn't help that like i'm neutral with both of them so like they would say some stuff that's like oh my god uh, and i was just like i'd get headaches okay that's a lie i wouldn't fucking get headaches but it just like i don't know i get, it just get frustrated so i just stop listening to it i do listen to some episodes when i hear they're gonna say something interesting um I, yeah. there was an episode i listened to recently where they were like talking shit about a mutual of mine so i wanted to hear it oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah that was me that was me with pcp after the the digi bro shit oh okay. wow yeah <laughs> yeah true we have a whole we have a whole like pcp eulogy episode where we like <laughs> really try to like talk about yeah, go I've back been meaning to listen to that it's 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 good um there's a couple of ugh, god we're st- like fuck we're like what 44 episodes into this podcast our audio is still like flip-flopping from like <laughs> okay to bad <laughs> oh my god but um honestly i don't really mind when podcast audio is like not the greatest as yeah. long as you can understand what they're saying i honestly don't really care that much yeah no i hear you i think um you know it's funny because I, I think it might be like kind of like a self-conscious thing because with my podcast i could hear it but with everyone else who i know has a very similar setup it sounds like fine so it's maybe that i'm just too hard on myself or something like oh man my audio sounds like ass who's gonna listen to this right <laughs> yeah and, um i think that sometimes and then i'm always shocked whenever i get no notes on an edit 
it's like, oh, I guess they didn't hear that grating hum in the middle right. of the background. <laughs> um, well, sometimes, well, sometimes I like try to do a quick tweak of the hum. I, I really don't give notes if I if it's something I can just fix right away, right? Because uh, none yeah. of us are getting paid, so what's the <laughs> what's the deal? What, what's the point of doing too many fucking notes? But um, what was I gonna say? I actually have been listening to like uh, this podcast called Zoomer Tombstone by um Synth Cool and and buddies, and they're they're my buddies too because I guest on that podcast as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm I'm trying to get Synth back on, and I would love to go back on Zoomer Tombstone. Uh, but there's not too many like I don't know. I there's not too many podcasts I'm like listening to. There's just some I just jump back and forth from. Um I've been like having this trouble and I and I've talked to other buddies and they've been having this problem too where it's like for some it's like so hard to even like sit down and draw and listen to like one video essay. It's like we it it feels like you have to flip flop in between some of them, you know? And I don't know if you guys had like yeah. similar problems too where it's like like I, I get bored. I started listening just to listening to music when I draw, like no videos. I would do that and... too. I would listen to music. I just kind of flip flop, I guess. You know. Yeah, I I guess it depends for me because um, in order to start drawing, I need to be like watching something mm. um, because that's the only way that I like motivate myself to start drawing. But then once I'm like in the zone, then I kind of just like turn it off. Mm. <laughs> and then I can just draw with like nothing or like just music um but but yeah I'm in the same boat because sometimes I'll be like watching a video essay and drawing and then I'll be like this is boring I'm gonna watch a tv show and then I'll watch the tv show and I'll be like now I'm gonna go back to YouTube <laughs> Some... <laughs> now I'm gonna listen to YouTube music <laughs> it's kind of like yeah we're all fucked now yeah true we're all t- we're, we're broken <laughs> we're broken <laughs> yeah <laughs> sometimes I would just um watch um I just put an anime I've seen in the background or like a movie. I should go yeah. back to doing stuff like that. I should just, <laughs> I've been, I keep saying it. I'm going to, I got to go and like just play the trailer park boys show in the background. Cause I've seen every episode. So just have it in the background. will be fine. I'm tempted to like do the thing where I have like two monitors, but like, I don't know if that's going to lead me down the dark evil path or something, you know? Yeah, I've actually been thinking about getting a second monitor too, but mostly just so I can play Switch games on it. Nice. <laughs> I um I do eventually want to do like like a face cam or something maybe with this podcast. I don't know. That would be cool. Yeah, I think that would be cool. Um Oh yeah, earlier when I mentioned the thought cops, I was going to say like I can never imagine myself just ending a show. Well, this is what would happen. I think <laughs> my podcast would just keep transforming right like this isn't the final yeah. form because like this i like this used to be the cheesy cast but then i'm like oh, i don't like that name no more so i changed it all right and as it keeps going this this podcast is just gonna keep changing and reforming and reshaping itself you know right yeah. i i feel like the final form of this podcast would just be a recreation of the pcp right but with like more <laughs> people of color right <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's where it's all going, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, um, shit, I don't know. I, I guess, like, it, it's difficult because for me, I don't think I would ever announce that I'm ending anything mm. because I'm so indecisive that as soon as I decide, okay, I'm not making this anymore, I'll be like, well, I could do one more. <laughs> so right. if I ever just stop making something, for a long time it's probably done but yeah. there's a small possibility i'll make another one eventually <laughs> so i just think i'm i'm i can't cancel anything ever no nah, i gotcha <laughs> yeah uh, serendipity stopped posting for six months oh where did it go yeah like uh, i don't know but i got bored <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah fucking um what was i gonna oh, God. you said something that reminded me oh yeah speaking of things never ending i mentioned this in previous episodes but um my my current like work environment has kind of realigned itself into a into a previous work environment that has a uh, I'm in the perfect spot to make more Bongo and Luna comics. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, back when I used to do it, um, that's because my work kind of like I had so much like free time and so much like space to just like doodle random crap. 
that I just kept doing rough drafts for Bungle in the comics while I was on the job. And now in this new job, I'm like in that spot again. And I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. New new, new ideas are, are coming to mind, right? <laughs> um, one thing, yeah. though, for anyone who's actually read all the original Bongo Luna, I will not be continuing that story arc. Because I kind of did the thing where, like, oh, then I got caught, caught up in my own fucking lore. And then I added a whole drama thing going on. I'm super not, like, interested in just keep going in that direction, to be honest. I think I'm going to just... You don't want to serialize it? Yeah, nah. I, I think I, I want to keep it episodic. I do. I I kind of want um something that's been kind of like been reigniting me is uh you know you know like the Keith Stack comics that was like the two stupid lesbian yeah. comics what it's called yeah yeah, yeah like that's kind of like more of a direction I want to go not like doing it like how like how he does but like just kind of like keeping it you know keeping it free balling you know and um and it's like yeah i think i should just make them gay i could do like a goofy yaoi comic but like it's it's like a toxic yaoi comic but silly <laughs> <laughs> right like fuck it right and that's what the kids love nowadays they love toxic media sure exactly oh bad person oh oh shit that reminds me mimi have you ever read uh the the book uh pinky and pepper forever no but i know that you love it oh yeah i have recommended it and it's good i just haven't read it i, I had the creator on because I'm, I'm buds with them um eddie adams okay yeah um yeah because like oh speaking of toxic yaoi there's there's a toxic <laughs> yaoi story right there right um i just wanted to remind you i guess <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay I'll, I'll check it out but i think um the the thing right now is i think I'm, i would keep like bong Luna patreon exclusive and like slowly drip feed people the comic right because i I still don't want to stop doing like my i still want to stop doing all the fart comics you know all the four panel comics that's why i call them i call them fart comics (laughs) right because i still get a lot of like random ideas i just write in my sketchbook right and um i still like you know i like posting those i like it when people you know make voice stubs i think that's great yeah, I love that too. Yeah, it really boosts my ego, you know. <laughs> has, has anyone voice? Yeah, those. Yeah. I was gonna say those four panel comics are the best way to get like more followers, mm-hmm, right? Um, and like on like art Twitter mm-hmm. in general. Not true. Um, and and they are fun to make if you have an idea. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, just any kind of like stupid. I- Here's what I notice yeah. is that most like kind of like fart comics are kind of like. Oh, if you have an idea for a funny tweet, just make it into a comic, you know? Yeah, right? exactly. Because um, the, here's here's one. I'm not going to post it. Cause, but here's one idea I got where it's like, a, and this is based on a tweet I made recently where a guy, he's like in the in the public bathroom and he sees like a glory hole and he's like, he's like rubbing his hands like, oh, I'm going to put my penis in there, right? <laughs> and then he puts his, he puts his dick in there. But then he looks up and it sees like an arrow that it doesn't say glory hole. It says gory hole. And it's like what? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, he shreds his pee. Like, but like he like his body gets like snapped into like two as he's like getting like sucked in and shredded. <laughs> no. okay. And that's like based on uh, there was like a gif going around of like the behind the scenes practical effects of the Blob movie. Oh yeah, I saw. Yeah, that. yeah, and uh, see and seeing that, I just thought of that like stupid fucking idea. Um, uh, I'm a fucking genius. Uh, I'm a fucking I'm a fucking big brain genius. Um, recently a buddy of mine has been making a uh, shout out to my friend Olske, um, who who's too scared to come on the show I asked him like you want to be a guest and he said like I'll never be on any podcast ever I get that right basically every podcast except for this one and the broskies makes me want to throw up really yeah. <laughs> oh w- wait what are the other podcasts I'd ask you to be on you could you could tell me this is a safe space <laughs> <laughs> I I almost threw up when I had to go in the thought cops. Oh wow! And also, whenever I record with like a stereo or Sarancha, I get like so anxious that I want to die. Yo, Asterios um, gets me so anxious. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I I don't yeah. like I I I don't know if I want to call it like the something about Asterios. Like so, <laughs> I feel so drained he's, after he's, talking to he's, him. He's he's really like nice and obviously he's never he's, gonna like, he, bully you but he's also got like he's also got an edge he, like, he has know an what edge he's gonna say. right exactly right <laughs> you know it, it's funny because um i i 
I think he tweeted out something about like him. Someone said he was like a Hufflepuff, and he and he didn't agree with that. And I'm like, yeah, you're more like a Slytherin, really. <laughs> <laughs> you're very a Slytherin energy, Asterio. You you have you have a little evilness in you, yeah. right? And it's like I don't know. After talking, I feel so fucking like oof. I don't know. It, it feels weird. Like I like I'm the def- disappointing father or something. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but anyway, um, oh, my buddy Olske, he's been doing his own little comics. Um, trying to share his profile picture. I'm trying to share his fucking. Oh, I fucking hate Instagram. Oh, I hate Instagram. Share this profile. Yeah. No, just uh, just give me the fucking link. Give, give me. You know what? All right, there we go. Nice. Oh, I love social media. It's so great. God. Do you guys know anyone? Do you guys have any buddies who just say like they're not on social media? Um, no, all of my friends. Well, actually, yeah, I have a couple friends actually who don't really use Twitter that much or Instagram or anything. I got, I, but they don't, but they don't say like, oh, I'm, I'm off social media. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, so I got a bud, and they've been doing these like kind of like simple comics with like these two characters they created. Which is like a, it's like a bat girl and like an eyeball girl and and I said like oh you're kind of doing like a oh she's like blind she's a bat and the other one has one eyeball and he's like oh I totally didn't think of that um <laughs> that could be a lie I could have made up that story in my head just to make myself seem smarter you know sometimes I just don't <laughs> I don't trust myself with some stories I like remember in the back of my mind right. Anyway, yeah, shout yeah. out to Olske. He's been doing these little mini comics. I really like the art style. Oh yeah, Olske is cool. He's um, he lost his like kind of like pen or for his like tablet, mm-hmm. so he hasn't been doing yeah, any Apple digital pencil. Yeah, yeah. So he hasn't been doing those. Sh- those shits are expensive. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> He's thinking about buying a used one, which is yeah. I mean, you know, you keep pumping out the art. But anyway, recently, going back to the topic that I'm a genius. He um. <laughs> He what what he does is that he kind of he like and I do this too where he'll draw out the characters in the panel and then he'll add the words, um, and he had like a comic done with it was just like the art but he didn't know what the joke should be, and um he posted it in like in like my private server and and like everyone was trying to suggest him ideas, but I think and but I suggested I not not to toot my own fucking horn I think the idea I suggested was like the fucking the big brain idea i'm not gonna lie and it was like it was like this like he didn't have like the dialogue uh yeah. for it right um <laughs> but then um i came up with i came up with this like stupid joke hold up wow yeah epic 10 out of 10 <laughs> ten, 10 out of 10 i i feel i feel this is just another sign of my brilliance um so true. Yeah, last episode I was trying to see if Robot Chicken was hiring for writers, and um, they're not. <laughs> Actually, Robot Chicken might be canceled because they haven't had a new season since 2021. You know, so oh, yeah, uh, I was gonna say I I I'm surprised that show's still going. Yeah, I mean, Kobe could have halted production, but at the same time, like uh, maybe they're not doing that show no more. <laughs> I've never, I don't think in my life I've ever met a Robot Chicken fan. Oh yeah, you're you're young. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, I used to, I I used to see Robot Chicken and shit on TV, but okay. obviously, well, well, you're looking at a Robot I, Chicken was, fan. It was too freaky. It was too fucking freaky. Well, this is me. scary. Are are you one of those people that's like, oh, oh, stop motion? Whoa, that's creepy. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I just think Robot Chicken was like weird. <laughs> too fucking weird for me even no i got it is a bit crass at times but i think (laughs) oh that's just the style Mm, it was the style at the time um but i was uh, making all these four panel comics has made me think like i need to apply for robot chicken but um yeah they're just not that they might not be real so i just have to make my own robot chicken um yeah i'm gonna have to animate it by it by myself fucking solo style you know (laughs) right Eh, how hard could it be? Just another endeavor for a cheese. Oh, I love now. endeavors. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love doing have multiple projects. Oh, I love working. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> I if it if it all goes south, like my final like my final thing my final thing to make money will probably just move to Japan, 
become token Mexican guy on something. Maybe <laughs> I can make it work. They'll be like, oh, you look like you could dance. And I'm like, oh, you're right. I can dance and just do a little bit. <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. And they'll want me to talk in English. Actually, they'll want me to talk in Spanish. And they won't be able to tell that I sound like a white guy when I speak Spanish. So it'll be neat. <laughs> they'll be like, whoa, oh, ooh, neat. I was about to do a racist, like, Asian accent right there for a second. <laughs> but I stopped myself. I'm, I'm growing as a person, cool. you see. You can't make this podcast too based. Right. Exa- exactly. You know, right? you got to <laughs> hold it back. You gotta, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta tease them. <laughs> Save it for the uh, Patreon episode. Yeah. The... Save it for when you have pan pizza. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll have him on when his, uh, when his pilot comes out or whatever. Oh, yeah. He's doing that. I'm excited for that. Right. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm excited, too. I'm, <laughs> I'm very curious to see what this looks like. I'm seeing some behind the, to play the, the scenes stuff. Loki IRL video game. I can't wait to play the fighting game that's going to come out eventually. That'd be neat. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you got any uh, you got any animation ambitions, Mimiori, for stuff? Um, honestly, not really. That's that's good. Uh, when I was, I used to dabble in a little bit of animation. Um, oh, like nice. if you go to my YouTube channel. Um, like the first couple videos are like little animations I did when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, but I kind of quickly figured out that although like I like animating little tiny things sometimes as like a hobby, I would probably kill myself if it was my job. (laughs) Mm. And I also don't really get as much gratification from finishing an animation as I Mm. do, uh, with like a comic. Like, yeah. I feel so much more proud of finishing, like, a chapter of Serendipity than I did, um, like, doing an animation. So I kind of just figured out, like, oh, that's not my thing. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how I feel about uh, 3D CGI. Recently, my dad was like, hey, do you still do that 3D animation? I'm like, no. <laughs> Hell no. No, <laughs> nah, I stopped that shit. Yeah, I, I've been in similar boats where like people ask me like, oh, hey, Cheesy, uh, you think you could help me with this filming thing? And I'm like, oh, I don't do that no more. <laughs> nah, yeah, dude. Ask else. You, you should have asked me that like seven years ago, <laughs> dude. Yeah. I'm busy. I'm busy doing other shit that I can't finish, dude. Um, yeah. I, um, I would want to like, I think what I want is like I could finagle like to – because I want to like get on more like collab stuff. That's why I did the. I'm, I'm currently organizing a collab to like remake this comic that's like a, a huge meme in the JoJo community, right? <laughs> and that's been going pretty good. I, I think I, I think I've organized. I think the server where I organize everyone's role, like it's a very like oh people know what to do. People people like mm-hmm. know what to reference. People can ask questions, you know. And I think I've collected a, a nice collection of artists who like could get it done, you know. I mean, I want to work with more teams because, like, I I do want to, like, do, like, big animation. Like, I did want to get into animation this year. It's probably going to be a later in the year kind of thing, you know. But um, yeah, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of ideas I have, and I think they could uh, I think they could do gangbusters, you know. So I'm uh, yeah. I'm focusing in on that, you know. All right. Okay, I think we're we're getting close to the end of this podcast, and we still don't have like a final ending segment, you know. Like we used to just like shit talk someone, but we like been shit talking people this whole time. We've been making fun of people who are too stupid to watch real movies. Right, exactly. They watch fake movies with <laughs> fake actors. Yeah, that's gonna be exactly. that's gonna be true pretty soon once there's like AI movies. Uh, oh no! Right, exactly. It fucking exactly. <laughs> oh my god okay well uh, uh well uh anything you want to promote me miori before we head off um uh go to my twitter which is i'm pretty sure it's underscore me miori <laughs> yep, it's on the screen <laughs> it's too. been so long i still don't remember yeah the underscores before not at the end if you look at me miori on google i show up oh yeah because uh, i'm that i'm that fucking awesome yeah um but also if you go to my youtube channel um, which is also Mimi Ori. I'm doing a new podcast. Oh, she has an anime so if you podcast. Like podcasts, 
yeah, I'm doing a new podcast with Dylan. Oh yeah, who's one of my best friends. Um, and basically we just talk about like whatever anime manga shit mm-hmm. that we're reading at the time. So it's kind of one of those podcasts where like, oh, if you're interested in in the topic, then you'll probably like it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're releasing a new episode about um a silent voice. Oh soon. yeah, that is an anime movie, right? Yeah, it's it's a long one. It's like an hour and a half. Oh wow! So we talk we talk a lot about very it, but... very so if thorough. You see that movie, you'll probably like it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right. That's basically yeah, it. Yeah, check that out. And uh, Julian, buddy, what do what do you got on the docket? Hey, thank you for listening. Please visit vqcd dot in. You can learn more about me and the stuff that I do. Yeah. You know, I totally forgot to shit on Hot Diggity Demon this episode. We've been kind of doing that consistently. Oh, <laughs> oh darn. Oh, we'll get him well, next, next time. time. He has an escape. <laughs> right, exactly. He has an escape our grass. When we're done with him, he'll be more single and bald than last time. <laughs> 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 oh, and I'm cheesy, man, Fredo. I got a bajillion, a million comic ideas. They're all on Twitter. Um... Um, I got the I got this one really epic idea where where someone the two guys they're in the woods and they're trying to take one takes a picture in the woods and they're like did you do it did you finally get photographic evidence of Bigfoot and they look at the photos like ah oh, damn it nah it's just more photo av- photographic evidence of big cheeks and it's like a big ass in the photo that's awesome. base that's gonna come I'm I'm a big fan of uh, Bigfoot comics and by big fan I've only done one of them like last year <laughs> actually no i love two years ago oh my god i've been lacking i need to do more bigfoot content um but i'm cheesy man fredo look me up on google images if you want to if you want to find mimi Ori. she pops up in my google images too oh really yeah well extra souls pops up That's so <laughs> you'll find it it's there right and yeah cheesy man fredo a million years uh this has been main character syndrome Thanks for watching, listening. Uh, Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. All right. I'm I'm going to.